I, I want to talk to you a bit about weird Python stuff. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be extremely informative for you or you will get a lot, lot of knowledge about Python, but it's something fun and maybe if you're open to it, you can even learn something. Um, I created Jedi a few years ago, like he mentioned. Um, I'm working on something called Parso as well. It's, the par it's Jedi's Parser. Um, if you ever need something that parses multiple versions of Python or uh, does error correction for parsers as well, it's a pretty cool project. It's pretty new. I'm working for a company called cloudscale.ch. Um, we do basically what DigitalOcean and other big companies do for virtual servers, but in Switzerland with Swiss uh, legal, well, basically a Swiss, Swiss geograph geographical location. And for some people, that's something that helps. Uh, <laughs> it's not NSA. <laughs> um, so let's, let's start with the talk then. Um, we, like, in general, people like job security, right? So in Python 2, there were things possible that are not so nice. In Python 3, some of those things were corrected. One of those things in Python 2 that was possible was overriding um, true and false. So if you ever want to be really annoying, do this in Python 2, but since nobody uses Python 2 anymore, maybe this, uh, this is not an issue anymore. Um, but, but anyway, this is, like, this is not the stuff I'm mostly going to talk about because unfortunately, like Python 2 had so many great things to talk about, but we're in the future now, and I'm going to talk mostly about Python 3. Uh, so P Python 3, or I mean in general Python, uh, you start out with a, th with a source code. Uh, you then tokenize those bytes. Um, the, token the tokens get used in the, in the parser, uh, which is then kind of shifted around into an AST. An AST is an abstract syntax tree. It's basically kind of, it removes the brackets and for, yeah, I guess that's the best description that I can give you quickly. Like uh, a parser gives you a tree, a parsing tree, and then the, 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 AST, the AST is still a parsing tree, but a little bit nicer uh, with a lot of things removed that are not necessary. Um, you then generate the bytecode from the AST, and in the end, you end up with functions and dictionaries. Uh, so I, I would generally argue that in Python, most things are either functions or dictionaries, or maybe sometimes lists, but that's really most things like modules and, and classes are basically just nice wrappers for dictionaries. Um, so, but let's start with the, with the tokenizer. The tokenizer is something really simple. In, in general, tokenizers work from top to bottom, from left to right. Um, it's nothing else than just basically taking the the first string that comes along, or the first, yeah, in the end it's a token, but like it, it works with the strings that, with, with an input stream of strings, not strings, of a string, it's just one, one little, one text, 
and then it basically takes it like, like here, you have bar equals one or an empty string, and then it gives you these nice things. It says, oh yeah, bar is a, is a name, and then there's an operator equals, and then there's a number, and then there's or, which is a name again. This is not, it doesn't even know that or is a keyword. <laughs> At this point, like, it's, it's just going on and on. And so this is not actually needed in, in, in some languages because you can, you can just do it with, uh, what are these grammars called again, if somebody helps me? <laughs> uh, P, no, yeah. whatever, sorry? No, I don't mean this one. But anyway, so certain grammars allow allow regular expressions in their grammars, and then you kind of can get rid of the tokenizer, uh, which is just less complexity. But in Python, the tokenizer is needed because of white space, uh, and and like how white space indents and dedents certain things. Um, so. But the thing that I want to talk here about is really how that, how we can turn around this tokenizer and make, play with it. So maybe hands up, who thinks, I, I'll, I'll give you 10 seconds, who thinks this is valid Python code, Python 3? Okay, who thinks this is not valid? Okay, I, I, it looks like most people here are not really sure. Uh, so this is actually valid Python code. Like it doesn't have a space in it. Um, it has this weird shift operator. Have you ever heard about this one? Uh, so, well, I mean, I, I guess you can, you can say that this is just something very unusual. <laughs> um, but the reason why this happens is ex exactly because of the tokenizer. Because the tokenizer goes from left to right, top to bottom, you can just go from left to right. You see br string. And then this token is finished. Why would you need white space? Like, it's finished. <laughs> so you go on and like, there's optional white space, but we just, this token is finished, go to the next token, it's or. Finished, go to the next token, it's a dot, and a dot's not enough, but a dot zero is a float, so that's a token. <laughs> that's not how people write a zero usually in, as a float, but whatever. Um, and then there's like, oh, I, sorry, I forgot. This is not finished because there's the J and the J means that it's a complex number, if you remember this. <laughs> and so, but now it's finished. There's no way that something else comes along. And unfortunately, an if comes along, but that doesn't matter because the token is already finished and we can start with the if. And then there's again dot one, no space, else, and then there's, I don't know if you know the operator, operator dot dot dot, it's called an ellipsis. And ellipsises are usually used within numerical, like NumPy and stuff for, for certain things. I'm not even exactly sure because I, I don't use it a lot. Um, so this is one example that's kind of fun. Then, like, there's the next one. How many, like, you can count, and maybe somebody can give me the solution in, like, 20 seconds. So how many spaces are part of this string? And, and, and this one is actually, yeah, that's a Python string. Like, it's, or kind of, it's kind of multiple strings, but in Python, string concatenation is um, is working um, all without a plus as well. Like you can just omit it. How about 
13? It's actually three. <laughs> it's, well, like, sorry, this is, it, it might have been a bit complicated to actually see it, but like, there's only at max one, one space between the thing, like, this here is no space. So I'm sorry for that. Wow. That's, that's a bit, yeah. <laughs> but like, like, yeah, you can kind of see my point. It's not really reasonable. <laughs> uh, I guess like if, if you look at it, there's a string starting, then it ends, then there's a space in between. Uh, so that's one space. There's a space in between string starting, string ends, no string, uh, some spaces, three strings starting, uh, a, a, a triple one starting, a space, so that's the second space, a triple one ending, then a string starting again, a space, that's the third, and then there's again some string, but whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, these are a few things that you can do with, uh, with tokenizers. It's not that crazy, but it's still fun. Um, but let's continue with the parser. Um, that's usually where most strange things happen in, in a language because you have this grammar file in, in Python. It's a very nice and uh, readable grammar file actually in Python. I guess like for C++ this would be way worse or you couldn't even generate a grammar file. But uh, I would argue that reading the Python grammar file, it's like this long, uh, is is a very good use of your time, sometimes, maybe. <laughs> um, it basically tells you how, uh, like, it tells you which things have precedence over others and so on. There's, like in this example that I gave you before, so like this bar equals one or empty string, we can take this now to the parser and uh, we have this, these tokens and they get, they are the input for the parser. So you basically end up with these tree like thingy there uh, where you have, where you know you have an assignment bar equals something and then you have an OR operation in there. That's kind of a simplified version of what you have in the AST module. So if you look like, you can say AST, AST dot parse of something, of, of a string, and then you will get something like this out, out of it. As I said, kind of, this is already like, this already represents the AST module and not what the parser tree does. They're kind of different things, but I don't want to go into the details here. There's a lot of optimizations that the AST does. Uh, so again, we are here again, is this valid Python code. This is obviously valid C code, but well, no, it's actually not valid C code because it's, it's just a one, but if it was an I or something. Um, so this is also valid Python code because in Python, you're actually allowed to write multiple pluses and minuses uh, in different location, locations. And semi, semicolons are also allowed. You can use them for some, some things. I never see them, but they're practical. For example, if you use Python, dash C, which is executing something in the command line. Uh, yeah, but like you can do much more funny things with that. You can do SDR. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not actually sure anymore what the result of this is. I'm pretty sure it's one or minus one, maybe 
someone wants to calculate it. <laughs> um, then there's, let me see. And there's more. Um, you can do things that you really didn't like. Like sometimes the language creators didn't really think about, or I mean, they obviously knew those cases were happening, but it's just like a side effect of what yield, the yield st statement is. And you can actually do a function, like a, a, a lambda function that is not a lambda function anymore, but is a generator. It will not help you with anything because it's pretty much not what you want. But, I mean, it's fun. And it can get worse, like you can actually have a default parameter uh, being a yield and you have like like bonus points if you actually know how to run, like if you get this to run because it's like it, it needs a few lines of code to, to just run it because you have to inject a value with uh, by using generator.send basically. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> so, so in this, like, like the next stage in, in general would be that we insert Well, I, actually, I, I skipped the, 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 the stage of, of generating kind of byte codes. Um, this is not something I want to go into too much of, of a detail because it's actually a very, very straightforward process and there's not a lot of weird things going on there. Like Python byte code is also something you can read about in... I'm not sure what the files call anymore, but it's it's like this file a few hundred lines long. It's it's written in C, obviously, and it's actually also really readable. Like it's not that hard to understand. I'm not I don't have a compiler or parser background, but I still understood what these things were, were and like how they were interconnected. So, to get back to this example of bar equals, uh, I'm not sure anymore, bar equals one or an empty string, we now uh, have, like, you can disassemble stuff in Python. Um, you can say by Python dash m dis, and this is the disassemble module in Python, and like, what you can do with it is basically you get back the bytecode uh, in a, in a human-readable form. And you, you can just say, uh, or here, in this example, the first thing is to load, like, remember A equals one or empty string again. The first step is to load one, then jump if true or pop is like, that's the or expression. That's basically just a different word for it. Um, and then there's, lo so, so if, if that is not like, if, if, if the one is true, it will just jump to nine here. So that's why you see the nine there. Um, there's load const here, so it loads uh, the, the string, uh, the empty string into memory, and then there's story to name bar. That's what happens there. So we are at, like, if we look at C again, there's certain things how we, how, how we can insert stuff into dictionaries, and uh, not, not into dictionaries, but, but like, we can assign stuff 
in a while loop, like not in the while loop itself, but in, 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 in the kind of in the header. Um, and in Python, you can actually also do that by using globals and then using under under set item, which is, yeah, pretty crazy. It's also not something you will ever use. But the thing you can, you can kind of understand from here is, or, or like this is actually an important thing about Python. Python is about dictionaries and, and there's this globals dictionary that is part of the current module and you can actually push stuff into this dictionary. Um, this might, like most people of you will actually know that it's a dictionary, but have you ever used globals? It's not something you should use normally, but it's, I guess it's kind of important to know about this. Uh, so this, this code actually does kind of the same thing. So there's other stuff that is kind of funny and, and that's, that's basically my last example and I, I kind of urge you to not look at this code too much because uh, it's non-self-explanatory and it, I, it probably doesn't help too much if I explain it. <laughs> what I actually want to, to tell you is that classes are functions in a way in Python. So if you ex like if a class is loaded inside a module or something, then it gets executed with a like a function. The difference being that there's a different bytecode, like it's the same code pretty much. The only difference being that there's bytecode, uh, there's subtle bytecode differences where you're not using store underscore name anymore, you're using store underscore fast in a function and in a class you're also using store underscore name because store underscore name stores stuff in a dictionary and to make functions fast, they got rid of dictionaries in functions. So a function doesn't have it, a real dictionary that it inserts its names into. That is, but that is really an implement, implementation detail because you can actually work with locals and get the dictionary. You can just not write to it and use it again. That's the difference. Uh, so what I did here in this, in this example, in this code, is just I kind of wrote code where you can say where you basically that converts this kind of bytecode stuff and then there's this function in Python that is actually part of built-ins which everybody uses because it has, also, it has int and str and dict and all those nice things and it, like at least in the newest Python versions it has this uh, function called build underscore class under under and you can give it a function and you can give it a name and then basically what it does, it makes a, f a class out of a function. Just the prop, like I don't even know why they publicized it because it's public in Python but you cannot really use it without converting bytecode and doing crazy stuff. So <laughs> I hope I didn't lose you here too much. It's a bit complicated. Um, as I said, I thought this talk would be 30 minutes, so this is kind of close to 30 minutes, and I guess we have time for questions. Dave? I, for one, am very confused now, and I mean this as a compliment, of <laughs> course. Um, do we have questions? We have quite a lot of time. So, <coughs> everybody is too confused now. Ah. So,
so with creating your libraries, GDI and the Austin, Parser and whatever, um, you rewrote everything in, in Python. I guess the Python interpreter already also parses uh, the, the source code. Uh, could you reuse some uh, parts of the interpreter for your work or did you do everything from scratch and why? Well, I mean, you can reuse the parser, but not for auto-completion. Um, if you reuse it for auto-completion, you have the problem that uh, user input is never, is not always correct. Like, if, if, if you end with something like foo dot, foo, foo and then a dot, that's not correct Python code, and Python's parsing library cannot parse that. So you need error correct, like, error correction. And then you can kind of build on that because you, you might even have multiple errors but you still want stuff to work. Yeah. I, I mean, if you're interested, I, I, I'm glad to give you a more thorough introduction. I'm also going to be tomorrow at the sprints so we can look at it there at, at Jedi or, or if anyone's interested. More questions? No one? Okay, then let's thank Dave again.